Welcome to Weekly Prayer. This week we're going to be looking at Matthew 6, verses 7 to 15, which is, well, it contains the Lord's Prayer, but it also has some words either side of it, and I think that they're often as interesting as the actual Lord's Prayer. But let's get into that in a moment. Um, Let's start with prayer. Lord, we thank you for being with us at this point. We thank you that you've been with us so far and pray that you'll continue to be with us in the future. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, so here we are then, Matthew 6, verses 7 to 15. When you are praying, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us to a time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you. And that's the end of the reading here. And I mean, the Lord's Prayer in that version seems slightly short doesn't it and that's okay in in church liturgy and things we we we, we add the dog the the part at the end which we find in one of the other gospels but here we have a slightly shorter version of it but i think it's quite instructive to us as well it's a nice short prayer it's something that's easy to memorize even in the west where we have I don't know how many versions of it. I can think of three easily. But there's a sense in which that's a shame. When I've been in homes for the elderly or for those that have mental health issues, it's been a pleasure sometimes to sit down next to an older person that I'm told doesn't know their relatives and, you know, he's just sat there. And to say very quietly, our Father. And then to find that they join in with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And they know it off my heart and it comes from somewhere deep within. And it's happened more than once. And it's a great blessing and often an amazement to the care staff to see this person become animated again. But when you are praying, do not heap empty words upon empty words. Mean what you say. I'm not really sure about the reference to the Gentiles. Jesus is obviously talking to the Jews at this point, And he's just saying, don't make your prayers long-winded. No empty phrases. Make it meaningful. And I think there's a sense in which that should help us. Because it means we don't have to sit down and carefully compose our prayer. It means we can just sit down or kneel down or stand up, whatever we do to pray, and just get on with it and say our prayer. And God will hear it. And then at the end of this passage, it gives us some more instruction. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you, your trespasses. Trespasses is, well, I think it's an old word for sin, really. It's for being where you shouldn't be. But if we don't forgive others, we'll not be forgiven. That's quite an important phrase, isn't it? It's something that we tend to just brush past, mostly. But actually, it's really important. How can we be forgiven if we live lives where there is no forgiveness to others? 
How can we be forgiven if we're angry with somebody else? Before we get to thinking about what God might be thinking, if we're thinking angry thoughts about somebody, how can we honestly come to Jesus and say, all is well, Lord? We can't. We can't approach majesty and glory and beauty and splendour full of deceit and hurt. Well, I'm not hurt so much. I don't mean hurt. I mean full of deceit and lies, really. Because it is a lie to go to the Father and say, forgive me for, for I have sinned, if you're carrying on sinning. We have to stop the sin first. And the reason I said hurt was, in the back of my, my mind I was thinking, and the trouble with, with being angry with somebody is we're hurting still. Um, and, it, and that sort of traps us in a situation where we continue to be angry because we're hurt. We have to break that cycle. And it takes an act of will. So, it's not about feelings entirely. And you'll have been told that so many times, I'm sure. But it is about an act of will. Lord, I'm so upset about this. But I choose not to hold it against that person. That's good enough. Because it is the starting point of forgiveness. It may take a while to get deeper than that. But it is a very profound moment when you start to forgive somebody. The rest of the prayer, though, give us our daily bread as we forgive our debts. It's the same principle, isn't it? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So the prayer starts with praise. So when we pray to God, start by praising him for something good in your life. When it's, when it's a thought-through prayer, when it's one that you're thinking about. Your kingdom come, that means may your... May, May I live in a space that is like heaven. May heaven be here on earth. And then we're back into the forgiving our debts pit. But the most important things, it seems to me there, are to ask God to come to us, to live a life of forgiveness. And to pray. It's very simple. And keep your prayer simple. Don't worry about the words. You can be as short as you like with God and you won't be unhappy. Bullet prayers. You know, prayers, Lord, I love you, but right now I'm struggling. Or, Lord, I love you, but, oh, well, I just love you. Are perfectly adequate. You don't have to be a theologian, a vicar, a pastor, a minister an elder, a church council member to pray. You don't have to be on a rota. It's just something between you and God, something that you can do. So having said all of that, let's end today's reflections and prayers with a prayer, and we'll include that version of the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray. Lord, be with us today, be with us tomorrow, and for the rest of this week. We love you and we welcome you into our hearts. And where there is unforgiveness, Lord, help us to expose it and, be, and forgive others. For we understand what you were saying, Lord. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those who are our debtors. And do not bring us to a time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. Amen. And may God rescue you from the evil one. Have a great week, folks. I hope to see you Sunday.